Okay, here we are at the wood chip pile. And I've been having it delivered here for eight or nine years, I think. It's been quite a few years. I used to have them drop it off down there where that car is. And I had to haul it up in the wheelbarrow all the way up to the garden. So I decided to have them drop it off here to make it a little bit easier. The wood chips actually go all the way down the driveway there. The oldest ones are down there and these are the newest piles. This is something that was dropped off just a couple of weeks ago. That right there is about a year old. And if you look at it, you can see how it is quite broken down already. And look, you can see that it's just loaded with worms. So uh, it's something that was definitely going to be very, very beneficial for your garden. What I want to use for the walkway is this newer load here because I don't want it to decompose very quickly. I want to be able to leave it on the soil and protect the soil for a while before I have to replace it. Technically, the Ramiel wood chips are the wood chips that are made in the early spring when the sap is in all of the branches. Ramiel actually comes from a Latin word that means branches. You don't really want wood chips that come from the main trunk of the tree or the bark, although that it's not going to be bad, but it's just not going to be as good as the ramiel or what comes from the branches. All of the sugars, the carbohydrates, all of the nutrition, the minerals of that plant are going to be in all of that newer growth. So you really want to get the whole tree. And like I said, I don't mind if there's any bigger pieces in it. So it's almost all small branches, all of this anyway, but it's mixed with the leaves, the branches. It's going to decompose a lot faster when it has the leaves in it. So very, very beneficial. Let me just get this wheelbarrow filled up and we'll get it up to garden bed. Get it up to that walkway. It's really easy to use one of these hay forks. And it's really not that heavy, but I think that we do have quite a few tons of wood chips here and it gets a lot heavier when it's been sitting around for a few years and it absorbs all of that water. Okay. I gotta catch my breath. This is a lot of work. You know what? It takes a lot of work to make a no work garden. It's one of my favorite sayings because it's true. I don't wanna be doing this when I'm old, but I wanna do as much of this as possible now so that I don't have to do any of this when I'm old to prevent all of the weeds from growing up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these bags. Remember how I told you I picked up several hundred bags of leaves and I used it to make my leaf mold and compost. So I take the bags and I'm just going to lay them in this area, lay them on the ground as a weed barrier. I don't want to pull all the tape off of them.
the first benefit is that it's free. Uh, the second benefit is that it gives your garden a very beautiful appearance. Using it in our walkways is the third way that I use it. I think the power company and the landscapers like to give us these wood chips because to them, the wood chips are a problem that has to be solved, that they actually have to pay to, to dump these wood chips. It's not cheap for them and they want to have a way to get rid of it. And they probably think that they're taking advantage of me by giving me these wood chips and I don't even charge them. Maybe I should charge them $10 a load to drop it off and they'd probably be happy to do that. But there's a lot of reasons why that this is so good. One of the main things for me is that it kind of eliminates the need for having borders on the beds. Now, I garden on a hillside here, so you can see that my raise up the bed probably about 18 inches on this lower side, but when you look at the other side, I don't need any border at all. And there are a lot of reasons why that that is something that is really important because when you plant your plants in this garden bed, the roots of the plants are gonna travel even into the walkways. It's not going to be restricted to this growing area that I want to turn my whole garden into this very, very fertile hillside that we have here. Another important thing is that we're eliminating weeds by doing this. I'm putting this paper down to suppress any weeds that could come up and to, and to smother them. You don't really have to do this. I think that it works a little bit better if you do, you can see that I do have weeds in my garden beds. I've got comfrey over there. I've got purslane. All of those potatoes that are in that bed were all volunteers that came up on their own, just from the ones that we missed from our planting last year. We've been digging them up already and eating them, and they are very delicious. They're like new potatoes. Then we have the mint that came up all on its own over there. You can see that we can be very selective about our weeds. Like the purslane is one of the most nutritious foods that you can eat. It grows free in our garden. The same thing with the dandelions. Same thing with the wood sorrel that just comes up on its own and the violet. And there's a lot of other wild things that we eat. So I can be selective and allow the weeds that I want to grow to grow. You can see that I can walk on my garden beds. I am not compressing the soil. When I put all of this compost in here, it does not compress. It firms it down, but it doesn't compress it. Here is some comfrey. I just let it grow right there in the walkway. And that just brings me to the next point, that there is a fungus that grows in wood and, and it requires wood to grow. And there's a process called mycorrhiza, and myco means fungus, and rhiza means roots. There is nothing that, there is no substance that is called mycorrhiza. This is something that people really don't understand. Mycorrhiza is the symbiotic relationship between the roots of a plant and the fungi. So it requires living plants. So you should have some kind of plants some kind of perennial plants that are very deep rooting, like this comfrey here, or like the dandelions, they have big long roots because they form that relationship in order to fill all of this entire garden area with the mycelium of these fungi. I'll get into that in a minute, but getting back to 
the other reason for having the chips on your path is because it keeps your feet clean. You know, in my kitchen, all of the previous years, it would just be covered with mud. I could never keep it clean. That is important to us. Now that we have the wood chips in there, you always have clean feet. I just want to say that uh, it can be a little bit uncomfortable if you don't wear any shoes. But let me get back to the mycelium, the fungi. There is actually a mycelium communication network that is in this soil. The mycelium are like the little threads that grow on that fungus and they can travel for hundreds of yards. And when they develop that symbiotic relationship with the roots of your plants, your weeds, your deep-rooted plants that you grow as perennials in your walkways. I don't care that it's in my walkway. I want it there. I get to choose the weeds that I want. But the mycelium network is going to travel for hundreds of yards. And the amazing thing about it is that plants, when they develop that symbiotic relationship with it, they will tell the fungus what nutrients they need. And the fungi are going to go and to search out for that particular nutrient. So if your tomatoes need calcium, then the, the tomato plant is going to tell the fungi that I need calcium through its exudates, which are chemical substances that the roots infuse into the ground. And the fungi receive that message. They go get the exact nutrient that it needs. It brings it back to that plant. And then in return, the plant gives some sugars to the fungus because fungi don't have chlorophyll. They are not green leafy vegetables of green leafy plants. So they need a way to have sugar and it's a symbiotic relationship. I, I think that it, it's just fabulous. It just shows the greatness of the way that God has created all things. And I am just very impressed by that. So, like I said, this fungi is a communication network. So if I have that potato plant right there, I'm ready to dig up by the way, but if a potato beetle comes and starts munching on the leaves of that plant, the plant through its exudates is going to instruct the fungi to tell all of the other potato plants that there are potato beetles nearby. And then all of the plants will start developing compounds within their cells to withstand the attack of the potato beetle. So it's not only that fungal diseases and bacterial diseases from rain hitting the soil and going up on the leaves, but it is a communication network. It's not only for gathering nutrients for that plant, but it's communication that a plant uses to communicate with all of the other plants in your garden. You have to have that communication network going through your walkways as well. It can't be just in the garden beds with, with sides on it that is preventing any communication from that mycelial network. So as soon as I step in my garden, my plants know that I'm here. It is just so profound, the, uh, the intelligence that plants have, but not the kind of intelligence we as human have, but it just, the way that it all works together, they are living things. They were endowed by their creator, who is our creator as well. And we eat the plants that has developed this immunity and we actually get immunity from the immunity that the plants have developed. So if we're looking to remain healthy and to be immune from diseases, then we need to eat foods that have developed that immunity in them. It is a, a fabulous, fabulous thing. Let me go get another load of chips. For years and years, all of this area was overgrown by weeds. 
that I wasn't really focusing on this part of the garden. This is the most recent part. And the secret to having a work-free garden is to be able to develop a system where that you don't have to weed, you know. You know, and of course there's always gonna be some weeds, but for the most part, if a weed comes up through this, it's going to be very weak and you could just pull them out as eventually you convert your whole garden over to using the mulch method and using the wood chips on your walkway, then you're going to completely eliminate the weeds. And it's going to take you a few years because the seeds from last year are in this soil and they are going to come up. So I'm going to have to pull out the weeds, but a lot of them will be killed by this mulch, but a lot of them are going to come up. There's one right here, and especially near the edges, the weeds are going to come up, but there's going to be less and less. Probably the seeds can be viable in your garden for about five years. So even after you've been doing this, you're still going to be weeding less and less every year for about five years. Okay, looks like I need about one more load. Now, none of this has to be exact. You know, if some of the paper got moved out of the way when I was putting it down, it doesn't matter. That's just to, to generally take care of smothering most of the weeds that could come up. Okay, there it is. Got one more to do. I'll do that on another day. But when you see a little weed, pull it out and in a few years time I won't be growing any weeds here this will be very very productive this area had not received a lot of compost up to this point so I put on about six inches of compost on here but this is the compost that I made four weeks ago so you can see that it doesn't have to be finished compost I'm using it as a mulch to maintain the moisture when it rains. I put 125 pounds of biochar in this one bed and then I covered it with this compost that I made. When it rains, it's gonna carry those nutrients down into the roots. Now, because that this is kind of a new bed, what I'm probably gonna do is I'm probably going to plant either zucchinis or squash, courgettes they're called, on the other side of the pond, or I could plant cabbages in here. So I would dig a hole and then put some good finished compost in that hole and then plant my plant right in that hole. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm doing this for next year. I'm suppressing all the weeds, killing all the weeds, building up the fertility, but I can still dig a hole, put compost in it and put a good plant in it and it'll grow absolutely fantastic because of the environment that is in here. But we're creating all of that mycorrhizal network by doing this and it will eventually permeate into all of the garden beds and go into the garden bed go into the hill go into the woods prior to us having a garden here when you look at the woods like that right there that's what our entire backyard looked like up to about 15 feet from our back door so all of this was woods and you know what the amazing thing about that is the wood chips and the compost that I am putting down are increasing the fertility of this ground so much. If you were to just go up into this area where nothing has been growing except for grass, you would think, well, this has been forest for hundreds of years. So the soil must be really good under here because it was under forest and you dig down and it is clay and barren, void of nutrition 
it is absolutely horrible soil. So sometimes you think, is putting the wood chips down better than having grass? Go back over here. At one time, I had grass between all of these garden beds, just like this grass that is growing here down the center. And I am going to eventually get rid of all of this. When I get the time, I'm, I want to get the food growing and get that in there first. But I'm going to eliminate this when I have that time because the grass is always encroaching into the garden beds, just like this right here. If I don't pull this out, it is going to grow all the way into there. It is always encroaching upon it. See right here, encroaching into that pathway. So by eliminating all of this, you might think, well, the grass will provide the roots for the mycorrhiza, but then, then develop the symbiotic relationships, but it just doesn't do it. The wood chips, a very, very far superior way to doing that. Yeah, one of the greatest things about the wood chips is that it conserves moisture. So even on the hottest day, when it hasn't rained for days, if you just take this mulch and pull an inch of it aside, you're going to see that the ground is moist under it. So if you want to grow plants successfully, they should never dry out. They should never, ever dry out. So that brings us up to benefit number four, and that is you can use it as a mulch for your plant. Now I used my compost as mulch, and you can also use the wood chips as mulch. And I think probably if you use it in combination the way that I'm doing right now, it's probably the very best thing you could possibly do for conserving moisture than building a very strong mycelium in that mycorrhizal network that I was talking to you about before that is just so beneficial. But one thing that you don't want to do is take wood chips or that compost, that unfinished compost. You don't ever want to mix it with your soil. You want to leave it on top. But there's a lot of people who really don't understand it. And a lot of people, they're very adamant about that you should never do it, but they just don't understand. If you leave it on top, it is going to use some nitrogen for decomposing, but it's going to only be that very top quarter inch of soil where it is going to be absorbing that nitrogen for breaking down. If you were to mix these wood chips with your soil, and then try to plant in it, your plants would not grow well because the decomposition of the wood chips would tie up all of the nitrogen in your soil and leave them nitrogen deficient. Paul Gauchi, he is the developer of the Back to Eden method. He uses wood chips primarily as his mulch. He doesn't put down leaves or compost or anything. He just does it in pure, wood chips. If you're going to do that, then you have to <coughs> dig down underneath the chips and get to the soil and then plant your plant in the soil and then you can bring the wood chips back around the plant. So there's a lot of people, they do things and they study things halfway and they don't really listen to <laughs> what I think is about an hour, 45 minutes of Paul Gauchi on his video. You got to watch the whole thing. But, you know, Paul Gauchi was someone that really influenced me a lot. Putting these wood chips on here are going to maintain that moisture. They're going to stabilize the soil temperature so that it doesn't get too cold and it doesn't get too hot. The wood chips are going to protect the soil from the sun and from the rain, which will bleach out that soil and make it totally worthless. If the rain falls on bare soil, the droplets can bounce up onto the leaves and cause bacterial diseases. The thing is that, you know, and I talk about this all the time and I just want to repeat it again, you have to have a fungal bacterial ratio of approximately one to one. 
and most garden beds are just bacterially dominated soils and your plants don't grow very well because that you don't get the beneficial nematodes and the protozoa and the microarthropods. They need to have that fungal bacterial ratio of about one to one. So by putting the wood chips into your garden, you're able to bring that fungal part up. You know, all of the plants that are considered to be higher level plants, you know, grass can grow in poor soil. The soil underneath that is just so poor that you can't grow anything in it and yet grass is growing on it and that clover is growing in it. But higher level plants can't grow in that soil. These plants need to have a fungally dominated soil and that is something that is really important. Okay, number five, which is kind of similar to this. During the summer, oh by the way, did you notice that I used the darker colored wood chips on this? This is from the one year old wood chips that were in the middle of the pile, so they are much more decomposed than the other ones that I put on the pathway. But this is the same one-year-old or two-year-old wood chips that you would use as a brown component in your compost piles. Because during the fall, you get all of these bags of leaves. I picked up several hundred bags of leaves last year. I have probably about 100 bags left because I always store up enough so that I could mix it with the grass clippings. But if I didn't have the leaves, and a lot of people don't have the leaves because they use them up in their compost piles, you can use the wood chips as the brown component for your grass clippings because you need the high carbon of the wood chips. And I just want to quickly say is that there's a difference between recalcitrant carbon and this type of carbon. The carbon that is in the wood chips is cellulose, they're lignans, they are simple carbon and hydrogen and oxygen molecules, the same as a simple sugar, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, carbohydrate. The word carbohydrate is carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. That there's all these different kinds of carbon molecules that are bound together with hydrogen and oxygen. When this decomposes, it is going to go up into the air as carbon dioxide. If you leave it in the forest floor, it's going to decompose and turn into carbon dioxide and go into the atmosphere, it is always going to turn into carbon dioxide and water. When we use the recalcitrant, the biochar, which is going to be the next topic that I'm going to be talking about, let me just go over there and show you that right now. This is carbon. It is not bound together with hydrogen and oxygen. So, you know, these other, the cellulose, and the carbohydrates are they're carbon molecules and people say well i need a carbon content it's just a carbon molecule with those other things the cellulose only one third of it is carbon because it's mostly oxygen and hydrogen that are in that molecule so this is about 125 pounds of biochar and it is activated biochar if you look at it you're going to see that there's all different sizes of charcoal that I turned into biochar, but some of it is very, very fine. Some of it are larger pieces. They break very, very easily. When I put this into the garden bed, it is going to absorb water, but I activated this by mixing in the eggshell powder that I made on the earlier video. I put cow manure in here. I put leaf mold. Every fall, prior to putting all of the compost onto all of the garden beds, I take out buckets and buckets of it, bring it into my cellar, so that as I make the biochar, I'm able to mix that compost and activate this. You want to activate your biochar for about two to three months. Now, these were all wood chips. So this is another important reason for the wood chips. You know, wood chips are just so fabulous. There are just so many uses for it. And I think this is one of the most important uses for the wood chips. You're going to turn it into the very, very best possible amendment that your soil could ever have. Compost, I think, is the most important. 
but biochar is right up next to that as perhaps the second most important because the biochar holds on to the nutrition so that when you put the compost in, it doesn't leach away. It doesn't run off with the rainwater. It doesn't seep down into the soil past the root zone. When you put this into the rooting zone, the nutrients are going to be locked up in this biochar and the plants are going to release it. It's also a very important component for the mycorrhiza network that I was talking about earlier. You can go to our other videos and watch all those videos about the importance of this biochar. So go watch those biochar videos. As I'm making this biochar, I'm heating my house for free. So I get the wood chips for free and I put it into the retort that I told you about on the other videos. And as I am making this, it is heating my house. So this is the fuel that I'm using to heat my house. And I get over $12,000 worth of biochar soil conditioner to put into my garden beds every year. So it's a win win situation. So this 125 pounds is going to go into this bed. And then after I spread this out and 125 pounds is going to be about an inch thick, which is about the right amount because you want to have about 10% of your soil should be made up of the biochar. I'm basing that on a 10 inch rooting zone even though that I know that my plant roots are going to go 20 inches and even up to 30 inches deep. So as the soil gets better and better and the mycorrhiza go down and penetrate into that soil and break up all of that hard pan, you're going to create more ability for your plants to get nutrition from, like I said, a hundred yards away from the mycorrhiza network. That's what I'm going to be doing with this. Put this on here and that's exactly what I did on this bed. I put 125 pounds on here and then covered it with leaves and I'll take the rest of the leaf mold, leaf mold compost, and then uh, put more of the wood chips. I think that it's a really good idea to put that wood mulch on top of all of these garden beds. So that other bed that I did down there, I'll take and spread some of that wood chips on that as well. Okay, number seven is that you can grow mushrooms in this. As I was saying, this is the perfect medium for growing fungus. And a mushroom, of course, is a fungus. And by the way, fungus is singular, fungi is plural. So I make a mistake every once in a while. But anyway, we have a whole bed over there. Okay, this is the mushroom bed. All it is is wood chips. Okay, so this is wine cap mushroom spawn that we put in here and we put down 8 to 12 inches of wood chips on here and then we spread the mushroom spawn on top of that and then we put another light layer of wood chips over the top of it. We did that in May. It hasn't come up yet and they said that that's pretty normal that it hasn't come up yet but we will keep you posted on this. Okay, now we're just going to go to number eight and that is Eventually, even though that you can see that I'm sweating a lot and I'm doing a lot of work to create this work-free garden, it takes a lot of work to make a work-free garden. But by doing it the right way and building these permanent structures and building that permanent fertility, once everything is established, you're going to have to just put a small amount of compost into your garden beds, not the six inches that I put on over here and there won't be any weeds there won't be any weeding you're not going to have to water because your soil is going to be holding on to all of the moisture because of the mulch and the wood chips that you're putting on it no weeding it's it's you know it's a, it's a fantastic system to create but like i said it takes quite a bit of work in order to create a work free garden so do it while you're young somehow Call some tree companies, say, you know, I've got some garden and I'm wondering if you're looking for a place to drop off some wood chips, I could use some of that. Just go and ask and uh, more than likely that you'll be able to get some for free and they'll be happy to give them to you because they're going to be saving money by not having to pay to drop them off. So 
I know that I covered a lot here and I know the video is a little bit longer than usual, but I think that I covered pretty much everything. Go to uh, Paul Gauchi, Back to Eden, to watch those videos. You're going to be just inspired so much by listening to the things that he has to say. Go to Charles Dowding. Like I said, he was the one that showed me that I don't need to have the borders on the beds. And he's the one who showed me that you can walk in your gardens and you're not going to compact your soil by walking in your gardens. You know, it, it, it's just so wonderful to be set free from a lot of the ideas that people were saying. That, you know, make sure that you can reach in from both sides so you don't have to walk on your... And it's almost like that people are aghast when they see me walking on my garden bed. So, you know, let's, uh, let's learn to live on what we grow and learn how to survive in case something really happens bad to our food system or to our country or whatever. So we will see you on the next video. So thanks for watching.